Hello and welcome back to the Holy Health Podcast. I'm Trainer Mitch and I am joined here with my beautiful, gracious, luscious fiance, Amanda Smith. How are you doing? I am great. How are you? I am wonderful. That's great. Um, you said Smith. And that never happens. Not from you, but like in the internet world. I don't have my last name out there. Oh, But whoops. if you're listening, now you know. Sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about um, kind of the mundane life. And, you know, I, I like to call it the matrix um, or the rat race. Uh, some people say that. And just trying to um, get outside of that sometimes is very difficult. And I know everybody loves their routines, and so do I. But You're like a huge routine person. I am. Well, like, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. But I think. Um, I think it can be looked at in a few different ways. For sure. But um. So yeah. Um. What's your favorite part of your life, Amanda? My my favorite part of my life. Yeah. Like my favorite routines, or like just like thing I do consistently, or. Your life, like your the it's freedom your life. that I have. Okay, which is um, why well, my real job I work from home and I create my own schedule, so I can pretty much do whatever I want whenever I want. Nice. It's like super. That was super important for me in finding some employment, um, and like I don't, I'm not giving that up, no matter what the job entails basically like I'm gonna be there until I don't have to be there anymore and we have holy health like thriving and surviving on a a bigger level um much bigger yes but yeah like that that is the most important thing to me is the freedom and flexibility that I have yeah, because you've told me several times that uh, this job will be your last job. I just said that with my client this morning. I told her, like, we were talking about stuff like that. And I said, like, manifesting, we are talking about manifesting. And I've said since I got my, since I started working this job, like, three years ago, I was like, this job is my last job before I work for myself. Yeah. And... Like, I mean, I mean that. <laughs> like, if they fire me tomorrow, like, I'm going to figure it out. I'm not going to get another job. Quantum leap. That's right. You'd have to uh, do something drastic. Get outside of your comfort zone. I, I like to make big jumps like that. Not often, because then they're not special, but they are uh, very powerful. What's your favorite aspect of your life? Um, I would say... The same thing, but mine's different because I don't technically have like free free time to like scheduling wise. Because like I do have uh, I have one on one clients that I work with through the week. Um, I work in the restaurant, so I have like places I have to be uh, at certain times. But I do kind of make my own schedule. So I've I picked those times, basically, because I was okay with it. So I created my own schedule. Um, and that's what everybody always says. Oh, well, you're a business owner. You, you work for yourself. You get to create your own schedule. It's like, okay, I mean, yeah, but that doesn't mean that I have freedom to, like, do whatever I want when I want. I mean, I can, but you can't at the same time because you have obligations, you have responsibility, and you have to fulfill that, and you can't like, oh yeah, tell everybody that, you know, we're going to meet up one-on-one -on -one for personal training, but uh, I'm going to cancel on you all the time because I feel like going to California, or I want to go... Um, do whatever I want today because I don't feel like working. Like, I still have to hold true to my word, and I don't like to cancel on people I do, 
do that because I don't usually do it very often. So it's like what you said about um, keeping things special. Like I don't uh, cancel all my clients unless there's something going on. Like I've even trained people whenever I was like super sick and I shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> but I did it anyways. Um, they didn't really care. But uh, yeah, I should have definitely like called off, so to speak. But, you know, I was being stubborn. Um, but like I was like I'm saying that's still like my favorite part because I created my own schedule. I can create my lifestyle and I can mold it into whatever I really want. And whenever I do want to take a vacation or go somewhere for a few days or you know maybe take a day off, I can clear my schedule. Like I have the power of my life, but I don't necessarily have like total time freedom so to speak? I don't think most people do. I mean, I don't either. I have a, I work full time at my job. So it's like, okay, you have to work like 38 hours this week, but we don't care when you do it. So it's like, okay, 38 hours of my life this week, I have to dedicate to my job. But I can do that. I can work 14 hours today and I can work one hour tomorrow and I can work no hours on Sunday like I can do whatever I want to mostly um to make that happen but I don't have like this is my life and I have no obligations ever I don't think most people have that no unless you like set yourself up like that yeah which is possible but yeah for sure but um I think to kind of like get into the topic we get really stuck in like a pattern and you know that can be said for a lot of things like movement patterns um spiritual patterns certain beliefs um the way we talk patterns um and just like our life and we get stuck in these patterns and it can get like really boring and mundane and you like look on the calendar one day and it's already September and it's going to be September in a few days and I feel like I could look back tomorrow and I can remember January it was like whenever we were building the studio in here doing 75 hard doing 75 hard yeah like I can remember that like it was yesterday and time just passes by like you don't even know it like it's just crazy and um something that i kind of realized recently because we have been kind of breaking outside of that um routine mundane life because you know it's literally the same thing every week you know we do the same thing on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and we never do anything for ourselves and if we do it's only for a couple hours then we have to go do this thing over here and you know we never get like a day off and we've recently been practicing that as well like um for the past two weeks yeah we kind of changed our day where we're recording the podcast because every time that we were going to record we were having like a disagreement yeah and we were just feeling like we weren't supposed to do it and so we took that as a sign and we were like, you know what? Wednesday is going to be a day off. Yeah, because typically we we both don't have any other commitments on Wednesdays. Like, it's our day to spend together. And we, we like, make pancakes and we go for a walk. And we just do pretty much whatever we want. Um, but we always recorded the podcast. So there was that aspect of work. Like, we always, every single day, both of us, yeah, both of us, we're working like every single day of the week there wasn't like oh yeah it's wednesday so we take it off completely or yeah we don't work at all on sundays like every day we are working mm -hmm. something so, yes even if it's just like a podcast which takes what two hours approximately like longer than that you know like planning coming yeah. up with the title coming up with the topic and just thinking about it and it takes takes a lot of time like it doesn't just like come to us instantly 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like we what two weeks ago we were disagreeing <laughs> about we had the mic set up, we had the whole setup happening. And we're like sitting there and uh You got all mad. Yeah, I was all mad. I threw everything and just like lost my mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> we we were disagreeing and uh holes in the drywall. Yeah, that. it's a mess. No. <laughs> um yeah, we were disagreeing and then I don't one of us said like I don't think we should be recording. You said that. On Wednesdays. Yeah. And so then we said screw it and we went and we loaded up bikes and we took them and we went for a bike ride and we uh went out to eat and then we took this Wednesday off too. Yeah. So like the thing that I realized is um well, it was two weeks ago now we went to a concert, right? Yeah, seems like four months ago. Right? It's crazy. So I think the reason why it feels like that is because we finally decided to take some time off and go do something for ourselves, something that we love and something that we enjoy, being out in the world, getting out of that mundane life. That was the first, the concert was the first time that we did something like that. Yeah. Like we've been out to eat and stuff before, but we go hiking, but not we've never in like the world. done a a thing before like that. A worldly thing. Yeah. yeah. So we we did that on Sunday, and then Wednesday we had the disagreement, and we went to uh, went to eat and biked and didn't record the podcast that day. Mm-hmm. And then last this past Wednesday we did something similar. So I think whenever. Um, you finally decide to do something for yourself and like fulfill that need to go do something that's not work. You slow down time. And we've both been experiencing that. It's like um, the concert was only less than two weeks ago, but it feels like it was a month ago. Like what? It feels like it was so long ago. And um, time has been slowing down recently because we've been, like, taking a moment to take it in and be present, take a day off, relax, and just be yeah. in the moment. And kind of, like, exist more in the world. I think something that, like, for me especially, but for both of us, with uh, the whole thing that must not be named so that we don't get censored on YouTube, um, the whole sickness that's hap- happened supposedly um <laughs> with that like i began to distance myself from like like the world and like going places and doing things because it always was like a big hassle like do i need a mask oh like it's not going to be the same oh, i have to social distance all the things so like i stopped doing these things and uh We've never done them together. And it's like, I think there's a great importance of like doing quote unquote normal things in society. That doesn't mean you have to like buy AirPods and uh, sleep with your 5G cell phone under your head at night. But like... I did that last night. What? You slept with your phone under your head? Uh, I fell asleep. Oh my... I woke up at like two, no, it was four, four eleven, and I was like, "Whoa, what time is it?" And my phone was like right beside me. What time head. did you go to sleep? Like, probably after twelve. Ugh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, like you don't have to like go wild and crazy and like go to the extreme of like living, I don't know, normally, I guess. Unhealthy. Yeah. Destructive sabotage. But you can choose to like go into that space like okay i'm gonna do this thing and then i'm gonna like go back into like my lifestyle that i love and that i reap the benefits from yeah because we are supposed to be like a collective race like there's a collective consciousness that we're supposed to tap into and whenever we're so polarized and we don't do anything for ourselves and we're just like stuck in the rat race of life and everyone's being an individual 
and not gathering and coming together as one united people, you don't get to tap into that experience, that, that human experience and being social with one another and connecting to other humans. So like, I feel like that's a super important aspect of it too, because yeah, we went to that concert, there's what, 20, 30, 40,000 people in one location. So like, and we were all collectively like listening to the music and being present in the moment and appreciating and being gratitude or being gratitude, being gracious or whatever the word would be for that. Grateful. Grateful. Yeah. Um, and like with that comes a whole new mental plane and it's like altering the time space continuum. It seems. Yeah. I mean, I used to do that stuff before the sickness, um, a lot. Like I was in a lot of big crowds quite often, I would say, uh, at sporting events and just other things like that. But you, were you? I don't feel like you were. No, I'm pretty, um, I'm just a small town country boy. <laughs> so like for me, I went to two concerts in one weekend and uh, there were so many people there. And I was like blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like it feels so, it felt so normal. And it was like something that I haven't experienced since like March of 2020. Um, and it was like, whoa, this is like, I need more of this. Like I forgot that this was like, a thing and I forgot how much you can like reap the benefits from it even just by being in that space and like what did you get out of it because that's the first time you've really done something like that so like for me it was like it was like a reignition of like the past like how things used to be and like it kind of like was able to bring me back into like how I was then and because then I started, I guess I just realized this. I started to do yoga in the mornings. I did more yoga and I like did like my morning stuff that I like always was telling you, oh, I need a morning routine. I miss my morning routine. And like I started doing that recently. Hmm. I didn't make that connection to right now. Interesting. So that's really interesting. But yeah, it's just like being in that space for me, it was like a, like a remembering of like, like, normal life like the way that we not that we should be living because I think we're still super disconnected from like the way that we are meant to be living but like the way that we we can experience things because the experiences were so altered the past couple of years from all of the propaganda um so it's like getting that experience again like brought me back to like Sacred. myself that's yeah. wild. So, but you, you didn't, that's not your experience. So, like, what did you get out of that? I think for me, um, and we've been traveling a lot recently. We've, Which is also new for you. That's yeah. also something, like, pretty normal for me, but that's new for you. I never really did much traveling. I mean, you know, we go to the standard vacations once a year as a family thing, but... Other than that, I was never a big traveler. I never felt the need to um, explore the world or whatever. Like I, I think it would be cool to go to certain places, um, and I do want to do that eventually. But I don't have like a big, like drive to do it. Like, oh, I can't wait to go to Japan. Like, oh, this is so awesome. Yeah, I can't you're wait not prioritizing it. Yeah, no, it's like, like it'll happen whenever I want it to happen, or like you know whatever, but. Um, I was never a big traveler and uh, I stayed within a, my circle, small radius. Um, Literally, like for real. Like recently, I mean, mile the, past, radius. the past two years is whenever that like really solidified itself um, because before that, you know, I was going to Pittsburgh to see girlfriends and um, I'd go back to college and... Um, Claire, I mean, I would, I would go places for myself, um, but I was never like out in the world doing things like by myself or, you know, concerts or going to cities by myself or 
whatever. Um, so like with us traveling so much recently, um, it's kind of just made me like really appreciative of the world and it's helping me see things in a different light because you know for the past two years I've been very negative I've been uh, I've been down every rabbit hole that there is to go down and I've changed my belief systems on how health is and what the truth is spiritually I've changed dramatically um, so I basically switched my paradigms in all aspects but I've been like super negative about the state of the world and how things work and the future and whatever um, so getting out in the world it's almost like it's giving me new hope and a feeling like okay like we are going to get through this. There's something on the other side. I can still create the life that I want. And we're not doomed. You know, uh, not everybody that got the, the, the uh, whatever you want to call it, the thing that can't be named, uh, isn't going to die. And, uh, you know, all doom and gloom and stuff. Because uh, I was definitely in that rut for a really long time. Probably two years at least. For sure. And um, it's been recent that I've gotten myself out of that. And started to believe like I was in 2019. Before anything. And um, yeah, kind of reverting back to normal. And uh, it's nice. It's very nice. And I'm excited for everybody else to experience that too. And like I said, I have hope that we're going to get there. And I think we are. We're on our way. Uh, there's a lot of big changes, I think, happening for people in their life. And that's why I think talking about what we're talking about today is super important right now. To get outside of your mundane COVID life that you've been living for the past two years. Because everybody, the whole, the whole world changed. Everything changed relationships oh for sure um, work the work environment your home environment the work like your habits that you would do your lifestyle in everything general. changed so like take back the normal and like go do the things that you used to be doing uh it, it feels really good so like i don't know if i answered the question but it uh yeah it just feels really good to go out and experience things that are outside of this small little town that I live in because it's like a mind thing too because if I'm in this small little space in a small town of America like super small that's like my mind will also get trapped in that mm -hmm. because again we are like a collective consciousness so if you are in that space and you, you slowly start to become that, and uh, I definitely was becoming that, and I recognize that now. So getting out in the world helps me to see how grand of a scale everything is and that there's so much more out there. For sure. that's. I think you're understanding why I had to the city to go to Whole Foods and stuff to get groceries and do all the things because for a while you were like nope nope like not interested in mm -hmm. doing things yeah because I mean with how sensitive the the environment was out in the world oh yeah it was any time any time that I would go out in the world I would just get super angry yeah it's terrible and, I uh, mean even now it's still a thing but yeah, like you see a mask and it's like, dude, what are you doing? Triggered. Yeah, like I just like <laughs> get super. Triggered. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, come on, bro. Like I want to just like slap the person across the face and like tell them like, stop wearing this thing. Take this off of your face. Um, this is America. Get it off. But uh, 
yeah, I don't know. Just like to stay in my little bubble there for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely nice to get out. For sure. Yeah, and that's what we've been focusing on lately. But I think there, like, how do you think, how do you find the balance between, like, doing that and, like, living your normal life, too? Like, do you think that it's, like, a challenge to, like, go out to eat once a week and eat, like, a burger and fries or whatever we're eating and then, like, tap back into your regular life? Because I don't think it's challenging at all. I think it's very good for me. But I think a lot of people would struggle with that, maybe. Like, finding that, like, being able to switch between the two. The balance. Staying consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, Not oh. Not getting off track. Yeah, like, oh, I went out to dinner and we ate burgers and french fries and a, Got soft, hammered. a soft pretzel. And uh, now what do I do? I'm just, I failed. Ugh. Yeah, like, that's a mindset thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think with that question, I think uh, you have to have, like, the balance of knowing whenever something becomes a habit or whenever something is still held like special. Because if you start into a routine of like, yeah, every week we go out to eat and then we do this thing and then, you know, we get back to our normal life, then it becomes like not special. It's part of the mundane. Yeah. yeah. And like you, I, I was always like very spontaneous and that's why I don't make plans, but you're a big planner. Oh yeah, for sure. You like love to plan stuff mm -hmm. and I was always spontaneous. Like if, uh, like before we met and before COVID, um, if I wanted to do something in my day off or I had some time off, I would just like figure out something to do and I would just like go do it and just like run away for a little bit. Or like, I don't know. I would just like spontaneously go adventure somewhere. Um, so I think that part of um, being spontaneous is kind of like that specialness that people enjoy. Because everybody loves like being spontaneous. For sure. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of like the, the balance that you have to have with that idea of getting outside of your routine. I like it. Yeah, it still has to be still has to be fun. It has to be new. Can't be like the same thing every week because then it's not different. It's like, what are we doing? It's the same thing. Yeah. But I, I think like I just can't say it enough how important it is to like get outside of this mundane life that we've been living for so long now. You're having like a big revelation lately about this. Yeah, like I, it's just like amazing because it's slowing down time. And if we want to get conspiratorial here, the uh, the powers that be, whether they're, they're different dimensional beings or um, human form, whatever, they uh, they harvest our time. That's like the number one resource in this life is time. It's not renewable. You say that all the time. Time's not a renewable resource. And nobody likes to waste their time, but we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. We are always on social media. We're always preoccupied with a phone. We have distractions with a phone. And what better way to like harvest somebody's soul than to create this rat race of a life that where they never get anywhere? And you're spinning a wheel, right? Creating energy for them. So that's like the harvesting of energy from you. And then, boom, like you, your time is sucked. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think that's like interesting. Like when you bring up the phone and like social media and stuff. Um, I go back and forth. Like this is a very delicate balance that like I don't have figured out. But I have a lot of intention around it is uh, 
who you're following. I think I've talked about this before, but who you're following and like, are you actually like absorbing the information that they're providing you or are you just scrolling? Like, oh, I'm bored. Oh, I have a few minutes. I'm just going to scroll. And like you see somebody post and like they have like a bigger caption and do you read it or do you just scroll by? Typically you just scroll by. So it's like if you're truly using social media in the way that you should be using it, I don't know, you should a lot, but I do think that you should be using it in this way, is uh, you get on and you are truly invested in the information and the things that you're seeing. You follow a select amount of people that you truly reap benefits from, not that um, cause you stress or fear or jealousy or anything like that for the most part. And uh, you're interacting, you're commenting, you're messaging and like genuinely doing it. Like after you've like absorbed the information that they're sharing. Most people don't do that. I don't do that all the time. I go, I get in spurts where I'm like really good with it and then I'm not. And like, it's like a balance that you have to like constantly be trying to refine. But I think everybody demonizes social media and I understand, but I also think like there's so much good and so much awesome stuff about it. Like think of all the information that you can learn about and discover on Instagram. It's like crazy. What's the thing that people say? We live in the um, information age. Yeah. Like if, and that's why like, I don't think people should go to school right now, especially because like, like high school or like what? literally any school, okay. like, like whatever you need to learn, like you can find it on the internet, get a mm -hmm. book, read a book, find whatever you need. It's out there. And uh, yeah, I think just to speak to what you were saying about the importance of what you're consuming you know, that becomes who you are. So like, you don't want to just mindlessly be scrolling because again, it's another time suck for you in your life. And that's like being plugged into the matrix. Yeah. And like whatever you're scrolling past, like you're, you're bringing that into you, like your subconscious and your energy and your space. Even if you're not reading the caption, like if you scroll past like some scary conspiracy theory about I don't know vegetables or something like then you're going to be like eventually oh maybe I shouldn't eat vegetables maybe I'm gonna stop doing that like everything that you're consuming even if you're not like really invested in the information you're still taking that in right so it's like being really I think we're so lax with that we're like very irresponsible with like our social media and our social media consumption. And I think it's not dangerous, but it's not beneficial. That's for sure. Like people who have like, they're following like 70 to 100 people. I'm like, you are doing it right, most likely. Mm -hmm. Like you have this, like you're, you've refined this enough that like you're tailoring what you're consuming to benefit you specifically. Yeah, I follow way too many people. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think it's like I get into scroll holes hardcore. He does. He'll just like Like I fall into it like I definitely like being honest here, like I get sucked in super easily and I'll be scrolling and uh I know that I'm sucked in. And I'm like, all right, I'm wasting time. But I can't stop. And I'm like scrolling because, like, I want to move on to my next thing. Like, I could go do something else or I could stand here and scroll for 15 minutes. And, uh, you know, I'm, like, scrolling and I'm, like, all right, like, one more. And then I keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's, like, I get to the point where it's, like, my frustration about myself has peaked. And I'm, like, yeah. And I, like, close my phone and. I get my life back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I don't I experience that occasionally, but if I do, then I immediately put limits on social media. Like I have a 10-minute limit on my Facebook per day. And anytime cuz I find that I used to like open the app and not realize that it was happening until like I was like like it was habit. Like mm -hmm. mindless, and then I'd be like scrolling on something. So for Facebook, I 
set a 10 minute timer and like that's what I do for like 10 minutes then it's up and then like you can get on like I if I need to look something up on Facebook like I can override it but if it if that pops up when I'm mindlessly like clicking the Facebook icon like then I'm like oh yeah I don't need to be on Facebook I was already on it 10 minutes today 10 minutes like it's like a good amount of time like I don't really need to be on it any more than that Unless I'm like searching something specifically. Mm-hmm. And uh, Instagram is a whole other story. But um, I just think like being aware and being mindful of that is like so huge. Yeah. And um, more conspiratorial topics like who created these social platforms? The people that are in control of kind of how the world turns they make most of the money in the world they're like in the top 10 richest people in the world and uh, they have a great influence on how things work and who sees what and how how like uh, like Jeff Bezos for example Um, he's always fun to talk about He's made a great company for himself. He's a billionaire, like one of the richest dudes in the world. And uh, when you have that much money, it's just like, I don't know. I just feel some type of way about it. There's no way that you can be a good person and like have that much money. Um, <laughs> but anyways, he, uh, he knows how to cheat the system. Or work the system, not necessarily cheat it, because there's loopholes created in like the tax system um, for the people that know how to play by the rules, and he knows how to play by the rules, so to speak, and you know he wasn't paying his fair share of taxes, and like that's just an example of how these elites of the world can manipulate and control what they do compared to us peasants down here and it's like it gets back to your time so it's like how do you spend your time and do you have enough of it is your time going past too quickly like most of ours is with our mundane lives you know we wake up monday and the next thing we know it's monday again and it's like where did that week go i have no clue where the week went and it's just because we have, we're just so busy. Why are we so busy? I don't get it. I like hate we're it. just, we just like, we're pulling in all of these things. We were talking about the other day with like um, conveniences. Like we've convenienced ourselves so much to where we don't actually get any quality time because, you know, we've brought in these conveniences to save time. But then we save the time with the convenient thing. And then we just fill that time with another thing instead of like creating space for quality time. It's just like fill, fill my time with more things that don't really matter just to pass through time. Yeah. I mean, think about, I, I try not to do this anymore. I don't know if I, I'm sure I occasionally do, but I really try not to. Hey, how's it going? Oh, super busy. So busy. It's like, it's like something that is like, makes, it's sought after. Yeah, but I don't understand why, because it's like being busy and being like successful and productive are like completely different things. Like That's a whole topic we could talk about. For sure. And it's like, what, with the busyness, like it makes you feel like it makes you feel productive, but what do you really have to show for it? Most people, us included recently until we like shifted things could say like yeah we don't have a whole lot to show for that like we've been running around doing this going here doing that all the things and like we're just we're in the same space that we were like six months ago we're busy yeah we're busy we don't sit down and relax we don't have time to we don't create time to do anything enjoyable we're constantly working every single day all of the things And it's like, why? But for what? Exactly. Because you see people 
I'm big on like, okay, back to social media. I'm huge on following people who have the type of lifestyle or at least portray it online that I want. So I'm like, if they have that, then there's no reason I can't have that too. It's like very mm-hmm. expansive. And I think it's so important. I think that's the most important thing to like use your Instagram for is like a vision board. Like I want to scroll and see people who have a life that is the one that I want to bring into my reality. Like that's what I want to see. And uh, I think it's like so important to like see that because it's like, okay, yeah, there are people online that I've worked with personally, like one-on-one or in a group or that I just follow that don't work a lot of hours. They don't work even 40 hours. They don't work crazy amount of hours every week and they make a lot of money and they have a beautiful lifestyle and they have a beautiful spiritual practice and they have like, they have it quote unquote figured out. And it's like, well, if these people can do it, then like we can do it. But we're clearly not doing something right because we're just like spinning our wheels in like the lane of busyness. Mm -hmm. And most people do that. And I think that's why most people don't get where they want to go because they're just stuck in that constant busy cycle. And it's like being busy and being productive and successful are not the same. Right. I think what you said there at the end is the most important part. What did I say? (laughs) <laughs> you said uh, being busy and successful Are is not the same thing. They're not. Yeah. And like that's kind of like a business topic that we could talk about later if we wanted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, different podcast just about like the old concepts of business. This is a modern world. We live in the information age again. Um, technology has skyrocketed. And it is outperforming everything. So, you know, if you want a successful life and not do all the normal things that everybody else has done for the past 20 years, get on the internet. The internet is a whole different beast. Um, Anybody can make money on the internet. And it's a beautiful thing. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of negatives to it. But if you understand those and you're aware of that, you can control it and manipulate the internet to serve you and not um, enslave you. Yeah, I think that goes with the social media thing. So many people demonize technology. They demonize social media. They demonize the internet. They demonize making money, making decent money. Um, They demonize all of these things. And it's like, I think they demonize it because they don't understand it and they don't have it. They either don't understand it and or they don't have it. And so it's like something that either they subconsciously or secretly desire to have or know, or they, they like just don't, they just can't grasp it in some capacity. I think um, most people are stuck in the old paradigms of like success or um, any really any belief system <clears throat> that's like from the past because I think we are like the new age people they talk about like big shifts are happening you know the uh, this the uh, this is where all my rabbit holes come, come through for me. Um, the Sirius planet is aligning so close with us, and we've never experienced these frequencies before, and we're going to start awakening. And See, I don't know we're anything gonna learn, about this. this we're going like... to slowly learn how to be telepathic, and we're going to ascend to new dimensions up into the 5D realm. And See, why do blah, you follow blah, blah. people like this? Unfollow. <laughs> Ugh. Even that turns me off. You like it. No. Uh, <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Where your conspiracy stuff falls into place. Got me off track with your comment. <laughs> it's my fault. Yeah. Look at him. Can't take responsibility for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I, you were talking, I don't remember what we were talking about, but you said uh, this is where your conspiracy absorption comes into play. Um, I have no clue. <laughs> where 
I was handed. I was talking I was about how good to... technology is and like people demonize money and technology and social media and stuff because they don't have it or they don't understand it or they secretly want I was it. stuck in old paradigms. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because there are people out there in the new age community talking about that stuff and they get pretty flamboyant with how they deliver their message. But if you read between the lines and, you know, stuck in these old paradigms and um, I think there is a big shift happening. I think there is like an up leveling of the collective consciousness um, and the new age people, you know, they say it in a different way, but I think it is true because of the information age that we've been talking about for the past few minutes. Um, the truth is everywhere like it can't be contained and it has been suppressed for probably 75 to 100 years and there's just so many different belief systems and paradigms that have been accepted that are totally blatant lies and based in fear and shame and guilt and they don't actually serve anybody and it doesn't promote any type of healing or progression or you know, living the life that we want to live, it just keeps people in the rat race of this mundane life. Um, so like, getting outside of that is super important. And I don't, I don't know if like those people are ever going to realize that they are holding themselves back and they're that they're believing these old things. Like they're stuck in the old days, like in the old time, um, because. You know, this is like a new age that we're going to be moving into. And uh, there's just going to be so many things that are different. So kind of back to the full circle here, started talking about business a little bit. Like, are you going to have to grind your balls off for 20 years until you become successful and make some money? No. Like, there's no way in today's modern world that you will have to do that unless you choose that path. Um, but me and Amanda, we're not going to choose that path. And like, we are progressing in a certain direction that we know that we're going to set ourselves up very quickly because we're going to use the internet. We're going to use this as a tool to create the life that we want. Um, so like we don't have to grind our balls off. For 10 years to grow a following or to create a business or to be relevant and successful or whatever influential like those things are multiplied it's exponential that's what text technology has done it creates exponential growth um, so things are changing business has changed the way we do things has changed so you have to get on board with that or else you're going to get stuck in the old days. And I mean, yeah, sure, that's fine. It works great. And, you know, that's a path that you can choose. Um, and it works. Clearly, people do it all the time. They have done it. They continue to do it. Um, but there is a new paradigm to join. And uh, that's where we're at. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're listening to this, you're on some level of like understanding that. But I don't, Are you? I don't know. Maybe. Are you out there in the world know. listening to me talk? I uh, I don't think every I know everybody's not like some people are going to be left behind in views and like every aspect of everything. Yeah. yeah, and like I guess accepting that and realizing that and understanding like there are always going to be people that like hate on the way that you do things, especially if you do them quote unquote on alternatively. Like there's always going to be some type of problem that somebody has with that but I think it comes down to your belief and like your confidence within yourself of what you're doing where you're going and how you're doing things For so sure. it's it's just like it's an inside job which is what we preach pretty much Constantly. always <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's why like again it's super important to you know get outside of the the old paradigm and create your new paradigm and like that's basically what we've done now that we're kind of like talking about it 
is like we're we're creating a new paradigm for ourselves in our lives that we're living together and we're creating space from that uh the rat race and by creating space we can actually use it to our benefit yeah we talked about space a little bit last week two weeks ago recently Mm -hmm. time and space yeah yeah like creating the space to receive things and to like do things and create things yeah yeah so that's why i think it's super important to like go out and do things in the world and have a day off and make sure that you're just relaxing and doing what you want to do for sure yeah because too often i think like we get trapped in so many different cycles and patterns of like, oh, yeah, I usually do this for this person because, you know, every year they do that and I have to help them with this. And I know this time of year I'm going to get asked to help with this thing that I do in the community and I really don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyways or, or blah, 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 blah. And you're doing things that you don't want to do. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to do things that you don't want to do in life necessarily. Um, but like on the grand scheme of things, you want to be doing things that you desire, that your heart desires. Um, and like, you know, not every day is going to be perfect where you're like, oh, I love my job and, you know, I want to do this all the time. There's going to be days where no matter what, if you love your job or not, you're not going to want to do it. But you're going to do it anyways because you know it's the right thing to do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, whatever that means. <laughs> I mean, I think... Follow that. <laughs> I think that's important, though, like, because, okay, especially for summer. Summer's coming to an end. But, like, summer's a busy time for everybody. Everybody's having a picnic. Everybody's, like, having events. You have graduation parties. You have the 4th of July. You have... Memorial Day, and then you have Labor Day, and you probably have a birthday party. You have all of these things happening just to get together because it's nice outside, and that's what we do. Family reunions, everything. And it's like you look at your summer, and you're like, every single weekend I have, like, somebody has something happening. And it's like finding that balance between, like, okay, going and, like, showing up for the thing and, like, doing things for yourself. So, like, for me – the beginning of the summer was like every weekend there was like something happening and like this month it got to the point where I was like yeah I'm not going to the family reunion and I'm not going to the graduation party and like instead I'm going to do something else that like furthers me along my path or and or like supports me in some way and it's like finding another balance I hate the word balance we're using it a lot <laughs> I don't think it really exists too much, but like finding that middle space of like showing up for other people and like socializing and doing all of the like things like that and like doing things for yourself. There's like a balance there that you have to like kind of find. That's like, like I'm not a big holiday person. I don't like most holidays because it's like takes me out of my, my routines all messed up and like I, I don't know. They're just not typically for me. And uh, it's like every month there's a holiday. Every month there's like a special occasion. And it's like, okay, that's great. I understand the importance of that. But like with everything else going on, you have to like begin to pick and choose what is important to you or for you to show up for other people too. Because you can't do all of the things. And if you do, then you're stuck in that busy, busy cycle of like, well, I, every weekend this summer I did something because, like, everybody was having these events and, like, I felt like I had to go. It's like, do you feel like you have to go or do you want to go? Right. It's, exactly. like, huge. Yeah. And, like, <clears throat> again, being busy isn't necessarily a good thing. It's like, oh, I'm busy. It's like, why? Why are we so busy? Why are we ex continuing to just, like, pile things on our plate? to get busier and busier and busier and are we really reaping any benefits from that you know reap what you sow like what are we sowing are yeah. we sowing a busy life and that's what we want then that's probably what you're going to get as a busy life but like i like the word balance because 
everything has a balance and you have to know how to balance. I like it. I just feel like it's like overused and used in the wrong way. Well, I mean, you can say that about any word. For but... sure. But I think it's like, it's like the word authentic. Like so many people began to use like authentic. Like I'm, this is like so, I'm being so authentic. Like I'm like basically oversharing in an unhealthy way, being yeah. authentic. And like, then it's like, well, the, now the word authentic's ruined. I don't want to use that because like I'm not doing what you're doing and that's not exactly what that means. <laughs> but yeah, like I feel like that's what balance is. Like I think balance is important, but I don't think it's like you come to find like that place. Of, like, oh, I've achieved balance. Here I am. Like I think I it's a constant. Balance. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a constant like, like thing, like, some weeks you're more you're balanced like you're more balanced than other weeks some weeks it's like a swinging back and forth on this like line of balance it can be a youtube video yeah i am balanced i am balanced, balanced everything I that am. i do is perfectly centered oh um. i sit and i am chanting <laughs> <laughs> i am at peace but <laughs> but yeah um, so yeah, balance, I think, um, uh, is that, it always reminds me of like a, a seesaw mm -hmm. and the fulcrum in the center. Mm -hmm. And like that is, uh, experiencing perfect balance would be like in that God state. And, uh, I think it's more of like an understanding and like a knowledge or a knowing of both sides and like being being like God and like being in the middle and like knowing both sides and being both sides, but being perfectly centered. And uh, that's a lot harder than it sounds. For sure. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of like how I think of it. Because, you know, life isn't very balanced. No, especially like, modern yeah, life. We ha everybody has crazy stuff going on and blah 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 but you have to uh understand when you need what you need and like when you want what you want and uh yeah without that understanding then you're going to be in a chaotic spin cycle of on the rat the rat wheel and you're going to wake up 10 years down the road and you're going to be like how am i where i'm at i don't know what happened yeah so unbusy your life Yes. Go experience the world. Travel. I mean, you don't even have you don't have to take a week. Like me and Amanda, we go. Uh, We've never taken a week. We'll take like a day, maybe a day and a half, two days. I think um, the most we did was three days. Yeah, and like that's all it really needs to be to feel it and to like recognize it and to experience it. Get in your car, drive somewhere. Drive a couple hours. A few hours away and hike. Get out in the nature and experience that. Go to new places and, yeah, just explore a little bit. Get outside your comfort zone. But, yeah, it doesn't have to be a week or anything. It just has to be some time here and there that uh, you get to experience the world. The the great, big, beautiful creation that uh, the comes from God. The big, round world. The big, round world that is actually flat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, so, yeah. Any closing remarks? Uh, not really. Not, I don't really want to repeat myself any further than what I already did. Yeah, I think we um, wrapped her up. Yeah, but yeah. The mundane life. Get outside that mundane life and... Slow down time. That's right. Boom. Slow down time. There you go. Yeah. Um, check out all the links down below. We have some new YouTube videos out every Monday. And some good stuff on Instagram here and there. Anything else? Uh, email list. Email list. Yes, I finally got it together and put up an email list. So there will be a link for you to sign up for that. That will be just like once a week or less. Um, just things that we're not sharing pretty much publicly, even though that is a public thing. It's not like out there in the world. It comes privately to your inbox, I guess. So just some more intimate things from us. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet, but definitely not very often, in my opinion. I suck at. Um, <laughs> He's very resistant to the email list, and I think it's I a great thing. <laughs> I, I I have so many emails, and I just am overwhelmed with how many emails that I have. 
You need to do some get... unsubscribing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I need to do some total like deleting and getting rid of the nine thousand emails that I have. Oh boy. Um, it's bad. I know you can call. It, I know you can call to do that. Who? <laughs> the email deleter doctor. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I I don't want to be sending people emails all the time. No, I don't only, either. Only whenever there's something like really cool, interesting, important, or valuable. Um, Once a genuine, week or less. Truly, then... truly genuine. Like I don't like I want to grow a following that is very genuine and true to us. Um, people that enjoy hearing us and they want to know more about our relationship maybe and just like keeping tabs um so yeah if you uh if you enjoy us genuinely authentically um and you want to experience balance join our email list (laughs) yeah it'll be it would be once a week or less like i said um we are still figuring that out we as in me because he doesn't want to do it that's gonna be that's gonna be our platform for exclusive flat earth content yes (laughs) If you're interested in <laughs> please subscribe. Um, but Just yeah. kidding. So you'll have like a check back in in like six months. You'll have like a thriving thread, flat earth email list. <laughs> be like the one to go to. <laughs> Seriously, no, that'd be cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, so all the links are down below. Please give us a review as well. I know it's annoying and like you don't like to do it. I don't really either, but... We would really appreciate it, and it would really help us out. I think that's it. Yeah, that's about it. Then we will talk to you, not see you, talk to you next week. Enjoy your amazing, fulfilled life and connect to your mind, body, and soul.